So, how are we going to run this in this? Easy answer? With this. And with this. <laughs> uh, how am I going to record this? Uh, I guess we'll start with opening the box and I bumped the tripod because that's what I always do, I guess. Cut that open. Open it up. I guess this video also includes a power supply unboxing. Ooh, that is a big bundle of cables. Okay, and we don't really need the other stuff at the moment. Alright. This is a non-modular power supply. So, cable management is going to be a must. But for now, all that we are looking for... Oh, hey, it has a Velcro thing. That's nice. All we are looking for is an 8-pin PCIe connector. There it is, right there. So this will just plug into this here. And I'll just set this aside for a moment because, more importantly, we will need to actually connect it to the netbook. And keep in mind that I actually modded, well, found a modded BIOS for this netbook beforehand, back when I did the video with the 9800 GTX Plus in the netbook stuff. So you can't just, you know, plug it in and have it run. But before we go any further, let's take a quick look at what performance is like without the RTX 2060. Wow. Alrighty, so I have this netbook once again running Windows 11 hooked up to this monitor. And let's just take a quick look at its current specs. I have done this in the past with the GTX Plus 9800 or whatever it's called, but it always helps to just review stuff before things happen. And yeah, you can see that it's running just with the screen mirrored. I will change the screen resolution in a moment. And if you you're walking around in the background, that is just my dog. Okay, so you can see the CPU here in CPU-Z. And let's open GPU-Z as well. Just get a full feel of what this thing is like before the RTX 2060. And speaking of that, I have it right here. I am currently just waiting for the power supply to arrive later today. Put that. There we go. Come on. Load up. There we go. And yeah, you can see right here, Intel Atom N455. This is way below what Microsoft really expects anyone to be installing Windows 11 on. But because I do want to try Minecraft RTX with this thing when it comes time, I unfortunately have to use it. So yeah, Intel GMA3150. This only supports DirectX 9.0C, and yeah, 
that makes something a little bit surprising down the road. So without further ado, let's go down a line of things that work and do not work. Furmark. Doesn't work. Minecraft 1.19. So yeah, Minecraft 1.19 doesn't work because Intel GMA graphics does not have OpenGL 3.2. And before I forget, let's also go ahead and change the desktop resolution. So it will mean that this screen will turn off. But it's not like we're going to be looking at that screen anyway, so whatever. Display settings. So I guess I'll just give my thoughts on Minecraft while I'm doing this. Minecraft 1.19 requires OpenGL 3.2 and this thing only supports OpenGL 1.4 as you saw in GPUZ and as I'm about to show you in GL Info. So let's go ahead, show only on 2. And there we go. Now we have a weird... <laughs> okay, there we go. Now it's working. So now we have a much wider screen, which is going to be nice. But yeah, OpenGL 1.4. Minecraft is not going to like that. I think Minecraft 1.12 will be fine with it, but I'm not going to spend another 10 minutes trying to get that started up. Anyway, Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Presumably doesn't work considering how this is only DirectX 9. How about some Quake 2 RTX? Nope. Does not work. And lastly, on the Windows side of things, Universe Sandbox 2. So this here is just, it's just called Universe Sandbox. I think it might have been rebranded at some point because I know that, I, that originally it was called Universe Sandbox 2. Either way, play. Play Universe Sandbox. It works, but only barely. Somehow, despite the CP or the GPU, the Intel GMA graphics being well below what this game needs, the CPU meets the minimum requirements, and I guess Universe Sandbox is a DirectX 9 game. I don't know, it's <laughs> honestly. Very ridiculous that it works at all, especially on, you know, this thing. But by far, I think this will be one of the more interesting games to check once the 2060 is installed. And now I gotta... There we go. There we go. But yeah, it takes agonizingly long to load, though apparently not as much as Minecraft. <laughs> but it works barely at, I think it was like a couple frames per minute. 
if I remember correctly, from that YouTube short that I posted. But, yeah, <laughs> it worked somehow. And, yeah, I was able to even quit the game from within the game itself after that, rather than going through Task Manager. Let's try and refocus the camera a bit. Yeah, I'm just gonna cut to when it actually starts working, I guess. Maybe. Actually, maybe not. It does look like it's almost ready. Whatever, I'll just do whatever needs to be done in post. All right, and here we go. <laughs> so yeah, it says right here, you have 1017 megabytes of video memory, but 2048 megabytes is required. And this laptop only has 2048 megabytes of like full system memory. And since it's got integrated graphics, the iGPU has to take memory out from the main system memory to use as graphics memory. And so, the fact that it's taking the full half of, you know, the total memory out, just a slice of it, to run this game, and the fact that that works at all is honestly kind of ridiculous. So, we'll click continue now. Wait for that to disappear, but in the background, you might see the occasional frame or two rendering. Like, you can see right here, series, and it moved just barely. Come on. I think I'll just <laughs> cut to when it's a little bit more responsive, though. That is very much a relative statement. Wait. Eh? Well, honestly, that's kind of expected anyway. Okay, so now that's fading out a little bit. And before I unintentionally blow up the netbook with Universe Sandbox, I am going to close out of this now. Oh hey, I brought up the details of something of an asteroid by hovering over it. Oh, I think my spam clicking might have... Yeah, I, I, I should not spam click that. Ooh, it is not happy. It is not happy. Okay, I think now it's just barely crashed. Let's go ahead and click stop here on Steam. Oh. Okay, yeah, it crashed. There it goes. Well. That happened. Do I still have Task Manager open? I do not. Anyway, <laughs> with that having no longer been in a working state, though it still says that's running here in Steam, let's now shut down Windows 11 and move over to Linux, where, as you'll see, nothing is different. Actually, wait, before I do that, before I do that, before I do that, we have one last thing to try, and that thing is ALVR. Now this is a sort of bridge program that lets you use things like the Oculus Quest and stuff 
as a desktop headset if you don't have Oculus Link working properly. And in this case, I very much doubt that Oculus Link will work all that properly, at least for now. So, yeah. It loads up a server that you connect to from the Quest, and from there you can load up VR stuff. And yeah, it's waiting for the server to load. And that server is Steam VR in this case. But as you'll see shortly, it has a very strange error state. And there it is. Could not create graphics device for Adapter Zero. Requires a minimum of two graphics cards. Apparently, I guess, my main computer over there with its GTX 1050 Ti and nothing else, not even integrated graphics, counts as two graphics cards, whereas the Intel GMA graphics in this counts only as one card. Anyway, yeah, it's gonna try and load up a web interface for controlling it now, and since the driver is unable to load because apparently it wants two graphics cards or something that looks to it like two graphics cards, it will not load. So anyway, let's now shut down Windows 11 and be done with this part of the video. Alright, and now that we're over in the Linux world, we can take a quick look at the specs that this laptop once again, well, netbook, once again has. So you can see Intel Atom N455 and the GPU is just the integrated graphics of that. And then heading over into hard info for a little bit more detail, we can go over to display and once again, only OpenGL 1.4, which will be something that we'll be changing soon. And I don't really have as much installed on this side of things. Just like Universe Sandbox again, which doesn't work. Steam VR also doesn't work. ALVR also doesn't work for some reason. Linux gaming is still kind of iffy, honestly. But I think I'm not, I don't remember exactly if I have any other stuff installed right now, but these are just the ones that got pinned to the desktop. I do also have AT Launcher for Minecraft once again, but we already know what's going to happen. 1.19 requires OpenGL 3.2. This only has OpenGL 1.4 right now. It's not going to work. So, yeah, <laughs> right now I'm honestly just waiting for power supply to show up in the mail because once that does happen we'll be hooking up the GPU to this netbook oh and also I do have to log into Steam real quick and there we go we have Steam working here and yeah, at Steam, I just have the same two things that I have installed over on the Windows side, so Universe Sandbox and Quake 2 RTX. Obviously, Quake 2 RTX isn't going to work because, you know, integrated graphics. It's not going to have RTX features. Wow, no racing, no ray tracing capable GPU found. Okay. And if I go over to Universe Sandbox... I'll click play here. It'll launch for a moment. And then it goes away. And yeah, that's all for those two. And honestly, it's not really worth showing ALVR or Minecraft here because we know what Minecraft is going to do already, and like I said, ALVR doesn't particularly work. And <laughs> actually, the entire desktop environment is kind of jank as well. Like, yeah, it's still reasonably smooth, but as far as 
yeah, you can see right there, the desktop background likes to flicker a lot. It's just not a good graphics processor in any shape or form. So, anyway, I got an email saying that the power supply just arrived, so I will be back in a second. And keep in mind that I actually modded, well, found a modded BIOS for this netbook beforehand, back when I did the video with the 9800 GTX Plus in the netbook stuff. So you can't just, you know, plug it in and have it run. So anyway, we'll need to take out these screws here in the mini PCIe slot. Normally that's where the Wi-Fi card goes, but because I knew that I was going to be doing this, I have not included a Wi-Fi card. Instead I have this little USB dongle for Wi-Fi. This just fits into here. And then this cable plugs into here. It'll sit like that. We'll screw it back in now. Now we screw the other side back in. And because <laughs> this is a rather absurd setup, I'm not sure if I remember whether or not the battery is required for it to run, but might as well. We'll be running the GPU externally. And with this small X connector, that'll supply the regular PCIe the power. Okay, there's Molex connectors on the power supply, so that's good. And yeah, I'll go and set it back up over there and stuff. So yeah. Ooh, this tripod is not agreeing with me right now. So yeah, anyway. Okay, so we have everything hooked up. Laptop is hooked up to the riser, which is hooked up to the 2060, and through that, through HDMI, is hooked up to the monitor. We have the power supply powering it all, and though this motherboard is now dead, it will still serve one final purpose in this experiment, and that is being the power button. And... I'll have to power on the GPU first, and then power on the netbook afterwards. So I'm just gonna open that real quick. I do need to connect power to the power supply first as well. But I am going to now point this at the screen and hope things work out. Oh boy, these are some wild nerves that I've got going right now. Make sure that the source is turned to HDMI 3. And here's the power cord. Okay, power supply is on now. Graphics card is on. Netbook is on. Okay. Hey, we got an image. Okay. Let's zoom in now. There's the Windows 11 boot screen. Oh boy. And now, in interest of saving you the pain of watching over an hour of pointless troubleshooting, I will now go ahead and tell you right now that NVIDIA's drivers hate the idea of an RTX 2060 running off of a netbook, which meant that Windows was completely useless for the rest of this project, and I had to reinstall Megaea to use the Novio drivers rather than NVIDIA's proprietary ones just to get anything to work at all. Thanks, Jensen. So, I don't really know what happened to the audio for this portion of the video, but 
here I am recording voiceover for it instead of using what I originally said in the camera recording. So yeah, as you can see here, it's got the RTX 2060 working and it's using the no view drivers like I mentioned before. Or actually, hold on a second, is that how it's pronounced? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay, so it's pronounced Nouveau. Anyway, as I was saying, Nouveau is the driver that I have to use here because, as mentioned before, NVIDIA's proprietary drivers do not like the idea of a netbook running an RTX graphics card through its, you know, Wi-Fi card mini PCIe slot. So, yeah, it still reports GLX version 1.4, but under compatibility version, it's 4.3, and I guess I panned down to it, so yeah, pointy, pointing stuff, yay, I do not know what I was saying there, <laughs> and yeah, I, I, I guess I'm just mousing around stuff now, woohoo, close the terminal, now, point around system information, close system information, and as you can see, the desktop is cleaned up now. Look, it's the GPU. Look, it's the screen. And yeah, I have Blender, Universe Sandbox, and AT Launcher there. Quake 2 RTX will not work because I'm using the Nouveau drivers, because that driver, unfortunately, is unable to really use any of the more advanced features of the graphics card, one of which includes those RT cores for ray tracing. The other is the inability to use CUDA cores, as well as being unable to boost the clocks up beyond the, like, idle clocks, which, if I remember correctly, are somewhere around 300 megahertz for the 2060. Either way, so now we're starting up Blender, however long that's going to take. And here we are, Blender. And not only that, but thanks to the RTX 2060, it is silky smooth as far as just general use. Like you can, you know, just fling the default cube around. You can see a little bit of lag, but that's more on the CPU than the graphics for obvious reasons and you can go ahead and just edit stuff so let's just subdivide this a bunch pull out this and just pan around and yeah just the general workspace stuff that is fully accelerated because it's running through OpenGL, but if you take a look over here in Preferences, the only issue with this is that because we are using the Nouveau driver, you cannot use CUDA or Optics or any sort of proprietary rendering, and so the only way that you can render anything is with the CPU. And <laughs> let me just change this over to Cycles real quick. It's not very <laughs> pretty. I mean, it works barely, but it could definitely be far better if, you know, the GPU accelerated stuff. Anyway, let's hop out of Blender now. Don't save. Next up is Universe Sandbox 2, which from that YouTube short that I posted, surprisingly works even without the RTX card. It runs on the integrated graphics, but only barely. It's got like, I don't know, one to two frames per minute. But after this launches, <laughs> you'll see that it runs at a much higher frame rate, but much is a <laughs> relative term, short to say. Like, I think around 2 to 3 FPS or so. Still a very big leap over what it was with the integrated graphics, but whatever. Either way, no matter what it's being run on, this netbook is never going to have the CPU horsepower to do anything serious. So, yeah. 
let me just adjust the tripod and now we will wait for our universe sandbox to launch because everything in this project has been a long game of waiting. Oh wow, that actually started up a little bit faster than it did the first time around when I tried this. Anyway, yeah, you can see here, which I also went over in the previous status update sort of thing. Minimum system requirements not met, and funnily enough, it's not talking about the CPU. The driver for this card on Linux, for some reason, only exposes 512 megabytes of VRAM, despite, you know, the card having 6 gigs. But, yeah, it's a lot more playable in general. Because a lot of the rendering is offloaded from, you know, the integrated graphics and stuff that's built into the chipset and put on the RTX 2060 instead. And you can zoom in, though I would not recommend that because it kind of freezes a bit. Actually, no, it's honestly pretty okay. But yeah, let's blow up the sun. Boom! And you can see, even though it's got some absolutely weak sauce Intel Atom CPU cores, the physics actually is decently responsive. Like, I'm not sure if that's something that the GPU can handle as well, since, you know, a lot of the proprietary NVIDIA stuff is not particularly usable right now, but still. Let's see. Uh, where is the one where it's Earth and the whole pile of moons. Actually, you know what, let's go with the galaxy collision. That should put a bit of stress on things. Okay. So that's loaded now. And let's just pan around. There's a lot of particles involved here, so this should be at least a little bit taxing for the graphics. Let's try and speed it up a bit. There we go. Now we can see the collision. And yeah, honestly, I feel like just for the sake of being a test, Universe Sandbox 2 is probably, actually surprisingly enough, one of the better cases as far as games go with this 2060 on netbook. Because it was already able to run beforehand, and the CPU somehow meets the minimum requirements being a dual core 1.6 gigahertz, though I think it's actually just single core with hyper threading and yeah it's just it's it just works somehow even better than things like minecraft okay and now the two galaxies are fully merged so let's go ahead and quit now go back and exit. It takes a moment. <laughs> And last but not least, of course, this is my YouTube channel, and that means we gotta have some Minecraft. 
So we have AT Launcher here, and this by far is what takes the most time out of anything as far as just loading and all. And it's also got the lowest FPS of anything, and I think that that's probably because of the fact that, you know, Minecraft is such a ridiculously CPU heavy game. Like, I want to say even more so than Universe Sandbox, considering how Universe Sandbox was able to run at a okay-ish frame rate, since it's, you know, not a action-based game. Whereas Minecraft, you're going to have a slideshow guaranteed, no matter what graphics you slap onto this netbook. Anyway, because this takes an awfully long time to load, I'm just going to let it load up and skip to that. Real quick while the game is loading, I would like to say that though the board no longer works, and as a result I cannot do the Pentium 2 with an RTX 2060 video, this whole thing still, at least because I want it to specifically, relies on this motherboard. You can see that the ATX connector from the power supply is hooked up to it. And the reason why is because it needs it's a, a power button. Because like the RTX 2060's power is not controlled by the netbook. It just turns on whenever the power supply comes on. And in order for that to happen, it needs a power supply. Or a uh, power button. <laughs> so, yeah, even though this board no longer works, even though I've had it literally my whole life up until now, it's still going to be an integral part of this project, and it looks like we are about to load in. Though so that's just the title screen, it's gonna take even longer for the world itself to load in. Anyway, yeah. And we're in, kind of, <laughs> but yeah, I currently have everything basically turned down to the absolute minimum settings. So let me pull up the F3 screen, and yeah, you can see up here in the corner the Intel Atom processors as well as the RTX 2060, which in this case is being represented by its Codename NV166. And yeah, zero FPS. Like I said, it's a slideshow experience. And I do have the same world as well on a version of 1.19 that I currently have various performance mods such as Sodium installed on. So we'll hop over onto that shortly and I'm just trying to face forward so then I can walk in a straight line come on look up look up look up there we go ah too high but <laughs> yeah Minecraft is Absolutely a no-go on this. So let's just quit out of that now, because I do not want to torment myself or you guys with, you know, this <laughs> for too long. So, yeah, once 1.19 is done, you know, closing down and all, we'll hop on over to the 1.19 with sodium mod installed and there's not really going to be much difference but I do have shaders. Alrighty and now we are in the modded 1.19 installation and yeah you can see it's a little bit different. I have loaded a 1 by 1 or 1x1 resource pack here you can see right here 
and hopefully that should help a little bit. I know that it's more something that would, you know, help a graphics card, but in this case, the CPU is such a bottleneck that being able to load one by one x one textures instead of the regular textures should actually help the CPU side as well, I think. Anyway. Oh, and before that, I also would like to say that I have some shader packs here that we'll take a look at later on. Right now, I don't have any of those shaders actually loaded in, but whatever. Anyway, I'll let that load. And here we go, even with the 1x1 texture pack, it's not particularly good. I wonder if the F3, okay, the F3 screen apparently works. Well, you can see there, it's still an absolute slugfest to play. It is a little bit better, I'd say, but really not by much. Let me actually do something real quick. So let's turn full screen resolution. Okay, which way is down? Okay, we are turning full screen resolution all the way down. <laughs> let's see, how is this gonna play out? Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, there we go, there we go, there we go. Uh, this is an absolutely cursed way to play Minecraft. Like, we have an RTX 2060 and an Intel Atom were playing at like the bare minimum resolution that Minecraft can even run at. And now we are finally starting to get not slideshow results. <laughs> and why is it so wide as well, actually? I'm gonna, once again, See, 320 by 248. I think that should. Okay, never mind. It's still like that. Anyway, the thing that I've been wanting to do shaders. Oh boy. Sonic Ethers Unbelievable sh Shaders PTGI E12. We'll finally start to hopefully flex the rendering power of this graphics card a little bit, though. Once again, given the CPU, I kind of doubt it. It looks like it might have frozen as well. I'll let that work out whatever it's trying to work out for a bit. Do you see that shimmering in the background? The shaders are working! Oh, <laughs> it's beautiful. Oh, the most cursed abomination to ever run Minecraft with shaders. And actually, let's see if I can raise the frame or er, raise the resolution a little bit again. Because I do want to get a better view of this, even if it means that performance is going to absolutely suffer. So let's do it somewhere in like the middle here. Okay, that's a lot better. 
a lot laggier as well, but hey, got to do what I got to do. <laughs> okay, so that's another screenshot. Oh, man. <laughs> It's so laggy, but it's so, it's running so much better than I thought it was going to as well. Let's, let's get rid of that for a bit. Okay, so without like the hot bar and everything, it's actually not that bad, surprisingly enough. Like after the one X one, texture pack and everything there's actually somewhat decent performance like this is actually performing better than the computer that I built years ago with like the Core i5 and uh, I think GeForce 8600 GT if I remember correctly this is performing better than that in shaders and this is full shaders, not just doing whatever. What is this thing? I do not know what this thing is. It's just like, oh, I think it's some ocean ruins or something. Let's, let's go underwater for a moment. I want to see what it looks like underwater. Oh, oh. Okay, that's another screenshot-worthy thing. <laughs> oh, the sound is quite delayed as well. The game is not very responsive, that's for sure. Okay, I'm gonna take a screenshot with this. Hey! Get, get out of here, new recipes unlocked. Okay. Screenshot with the specs because the specs are what I care about the most as far as these screenshots go. But I will go ahead and take some cursed screenshots in F1 as well. And I'll be sure to try and get these screenshots posted in the video itself once I, you know, do the editing and stuff. Because Ray traced Minecraft with 1x1 textures. Oh boy! Let's see if I can manage to get up somewhere where I can start flying around the world. I really doubt that I'll be able to fly, but who knows. Okay, yeah, no flying. Unless I once again turn down the video settings. So yeah, that's in 800 by 600 there. So we're going all the way back down to 320 by 180, which is that ridiculously wide setting. Let's see if I can fly now. Come on. Okay, yeah, the game is just not responsive enough. I guess I'll take some extreme low res screenshots here as well here then but yeah this works somehow and I'm loving every moment of just its cursed glory like you can see, once again, the specs, it's a little bit cut off because the screen is actually not wide enough to fit this resolution, I guess, with whatever scaling it's using. But I think that the screenshot itself should hold everything that's needed. But, <laughs> yeah. Let's get back up onto a high point where I can look around a bit more.
So yeah, even though this isn't exactly Minecraft with RTX, it is path traced Minecraft and path tracing is similar enough to ray tracing that I let it count. And all this is happening on an RTX 2060 attached to a netbook of all things. And I've already shown you the specs plenty enough times. I really just want to explore the world a little bit right now. So I'll stop talking for a bit because I'm just going to be a tourist in this Minecraft world and take some screenshots. Oh, flying works now. There we go. So yeah, this is clearly an island, first of all. But second of all, it's an island in full path traced glory on an Intel Atom and an RTX 2060. Oh, actually, maybe it's not an island. Yeah, it's, I think this is just my rendering settings being way too low to really see anything beyond that little coast there. So anyway, <laughs> I think that this just about concludes our weird Minecraft plus ray tracing or path tracing and in Intel Atom on RTX 2060 stuff. I can't really say that there's all that much else that I can show on account of just how limited the netbook is outside of the graphics department and <laughs> you can kind of see that the screen right now is kind of turning into just a mess of pixels because it's currently I think about to be sunset again in the game and yeah the shadows aren't exactly liking this low resolution but yeah, I... Oh, is that an emerald there? That's emerald ore. But, yeah, as I was saying, there's a lot of stuff that I've discovered in the making of this video that I did not know before. Like how NVIDIA apparently blocks their graphics cards using their own official drivers 
from running on, you know, especially strange use cases, though more generally, just in cases where it's used externally. And, well, the fact that an RTX 2060 works at all on a netbook of all things, that's certainly a surprise. <laughs> and, yeah, I would also like to take a bit of time to say thank you, because as I was making this video, I hit... 200 subscribers on YouTube and the funny thing is back when I hit 100 100 subscribers I Made a similar video to this one except using this card a 9800 GTX plus which is far far older than the 2060 but Yeah, I really didn't think that I would ever get this far, honestly, as far as YouTube goes. Like, I'm just making these videos in my spare time with whatever random things I have laying around or manage to afford to buy, and this graphics card happened to be one of the latter. And so, as I'm flying around this mountain in a buttery smooth 1-2 to two FPS, I would just like to reiterate once again, thank you for watching, and just as one absolute final note, I did also try cranking up the settings, and this is more or less standard settings with shaders applied, and well, there's still fast graphics, I forgot to change that, but it really doesn't matter. Performance, because I'm not using the 1x texture pack, is actually worse because the CPU has to send more data to the GPU. Like, you can see and feel the difference between, once again, the very stuttery, well not even stuttery, the very slideshow-y frame rate here versus what we were getting before with the 1x texture pack. So yeah, also another thing, the shadows, the weird flickering shadows, I think that might be a problem with the driver, the open source driver, because yeah, there's not really much else that I have to say about it. I spent half an hour loading the world and reversing all the <laughs> performance tweaks that I did. Anyway, yeah, thanks for watching and... And because I made the realization after the fact that changing the resolution doesn't really help the CPU in any way as far as performance goes, here is one final recording of just me flying around in full resolution instead of the ridiculously shrunken down one that the majority of this footage has been recorded with. Real quick, I would like to say that it turns out the resolution actually doesn't really matter all that much because either way it's the performance is still kind of crap. <laughs> so yeah, I guess have some flyovers of this while it's like full resolution instead. Hold on a sec.
Oh, I just noticed something. The GPU utilization is actually, you know, being used 84% though. The fan isn't ramping up, so I don't think that that's all that reliable, so to say. Because I don't hear the fans ramping up, and that would be the case if it actually was being utilized like that. Oh, more water. So yeah, that's the video. An hour of footage of a netbook being put under torturous workloads. Thanks for watching. <laughs> See ya.